the land of the Marini, the land of the American Indians. In this majestic land, it's uh, full of gold and culture and different things. Welcome to another episode of Away We Go. Stay tuned. Well, welcome to another episode of Away We Go. We're so thankful that you are uh, watching. My name is Danosiel Vasquez Ibarra, and this is Lina Kuna. 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 It's getting better and better every week. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So welcome, Lena, uh, to the show. And tell us where we're we going today. We're going to French Guiana. French Guiana, right in <laughs> South America. So we are so excited to show you this beautiful land. Like I said in the introduction, this is the land of the indigenous people, the Maroni, uh, the American Indians, and now a French um, settlement. And we'll get right on it. So thank you for watching. So, Lena, let's get into our PowerPoint and let's show them about uh, where French Guyana, the flag of French Guyana, and then we'll go into Google Earth and we'll uh, begin our tour right here from the studios in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, here we are, Columbus, Ohio, and then we'll go from here to the French settlement of French Guyana. So this time we're not going uh, West or East, we're going south, and we're looking right here in the southern part, and we're looking right at this small country, uh, French Guyana, which is one of the three Guyanas of South America, right? Yes. Um, and we are looking right here at the country. Now, there is 95% of this nation is covered by the Amazon rainforest. So, but not only that, it's also a nation full of gold, yes. of gold. It's one of the main exports. One of the main exports of gold. So if you're looking for the real gold, um, it is here. Uh, so Lena, I had the privilege of being here, what, two years ago. And my, my time there in French Guiana was nothing short of amazing. I had the opportunity to visit with the tribes. So I visited with the American tribes and with the American Indians. We brought some supplies and uh, did some um, uh, teachings and things like that. So it was it was a fantastic time. And uh, anyway, let's start looking at our PowerPoint. We, we kind of look, okay, yes, let's go to our PowerPoint. <laughs> so since it's uh, French territory, the official flag is the French flag, uh -huh. it's in the upper left corner. Yeah. But they also have their own flag, Jose or something. Uh -huh. And the green symbolizes the rainforest and natural resources they have. Yes. You said 95% is covered by the Amazon rainforest. So what does the red star mean? The red star symbolizes socialism, which dominates the country. Uh -huh. And the yellow represents the gold and other minor mineral wealth that they have. Okay, <laughs> maybe the gold. Yes. Uh, the, maybe the gold. The yellow symbolizes the gold. So. This is a not a very um, popular tourist country. Even though when I was there, it felt alike like being in the Caribbean because of the palm trees, the closer to the Atlantic. Uh, but the, the, the beaches around the coast are not as, um, um, are not as, as beautiful uh, as, the, as, the, as the green water. So. Anyway, uh, let's look at um, some of the interesting facts. Let's go into our PowerPoint. Let's, do, let's start with the quick facts, like always. Yeah. The official name is French Guiana. It was founded on July 14, 1946. And as you said, and we saw on Google Earth, it's in South America. Mm -hmm. Can you show us the yeah. capital Cayenne on Google? Yes, let's go to Google Earth. I'll show you the countries that are around uh, French Guiana. We have on the west side we have Suriname and on the south and east side uh, in Google Earth we have uh, the country of Brazil Brazil so in one of the pictures I'll show you later on in the show you'll see a picture of me getting on the airplane and I flew into this uh, area 
but uh, actually I'll show you here on Google Earth, uh, Grand Santini, that's where I went at Grand Santini, and landed in an island, well, it was not the island, but here on, the, on this part. And when I got off the plane, I got greeted with machine guns because um, they thought I was a Brazilian coming for gold, and I have to, uh, the people that were with me, or my friend who was with me, he said, no, 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 no Brazilian, no Brazilian, American, American, so that they were more at peace. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, this is where, where French Guyana is, and the capital is up here on the north, and we're looking at here on Google Earth, is Cayana, Cayenne. So we're looking at the capital, which is not very big, Lena. Do you know how many, the population? Yeah, there's only 290,000. All right, so to give you an overview. The whole population of the whole country. The whole population of the whole country. And for Cayenne, it's only around... 60,000. I think, yeah. It's 60,000. So it's bigger. Canal Winchester, just to give you an overview, if you're watching here from Ohio, uh, Canal Winchester, Ohio, is bigger than almost the whole country and the population. So there's not a lot of French Guyanese. If you ever see one, treat them well, because there's not a lot of them. <laughs> now they're wonderful people. They're very, very good, very good people. So we're looking right here in Google Earth at the capital, Cayenne. We're gonna see, we're gonna do a 3D so you can see how the land is. Most of the country is very flat. Uh, not a lot of high points, even though there is some mountains, right? So you're looking at Cayenne, and something interesting about Cayenne is that this is the place, uh, or, or the chili peppers, right, are called Cayenne because of this, yeah. uh, this part. Anyway, Lena, take us back to the, to the quick facts. On the PowerPoint. On the PowerPoint, yeah. Can we switch to the PowerPoint? There we go. So the next thing is the official language uh -huh. is French. It's French. But they also speak Creole in French Guyana. Creole, Creole, French Guyana, they speak a little bit. Some of them at the border with Suriname, they might speak Dutch because of the, of the proximity. And if they want to sell things, they have to speak Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. so they use the euro. Yes, so their money is not pesos, is not Brazilian. Uh, the money uh, is euros. Yeah. Now, you're familiar with euros. I am. For me, it's easier to do euros than anything else. Because you're originally from Germany and you used euros in Germany. Yeah. So tell us a little bit uh, facts, economic facts about the euro. Like, what's the comparison with US dollars? The comparison? For one euro, you get 1.21 US dollars. So the, the euro is higher than the yeah. dollar. That's crazy. So if you split, you get less euros right. for the US dollar amount. Yes. That's, that's incredible. Um, and this is the currency that they use um, in this country. So here in a little bit, I'll show you guys what, uh, what, what it's like. Like I said, you know, it's a very... Uh, feels like a very Caribbean country. Feels like you are in in a Caribbean nation, even though you are in South America. So, um, what else do we have? The language is French. The euro. Yeah, and the head of the government is Rodolphe Alexander. Uh huh. <laughs> and as you said, it's hot, humid, and rainy. So they really don't have uh, any cold all year round. The lowest temperature you might get. It's maybe 50 degrees. That's it? Yes. And people are going to be wearing coats when it gets 50. <laughs> we wish it was 50 here where we are. But um, yeah, yeah uh, because it's close to the equator. So close to the equator, flowers never die. That's, that's true. That's awesome. <laughs> that is great. All right. Let's go now to, um, to Google, back to Google Earth. And let me, sh let's, let's, let me show you something cool here uh, in Google Earth. Um, of what it looks like. So we're looking at, at, the, at the 2D here of the capital, and we're gonna go to Mon Burunda. I just wanna show you uh, what, what it looks like when you get here. So this is Mount Morunda. Mm -hmm. We're going right in, 
and there it is, just forest. This is the entrance to the Amazon. So uh, this is a lot of, the, uh, you know, the floor looks like a lot of movies, I'm sure, you know, are produced here. And uh, anyway, we're looking around. Again, we're in French Guyana in South America. So, Leon, you know, tell us a little more about this country as I go through the, through the different places here. Should we go back to the PowerPoint? Yeah, let's, let's do PowerPoint. And let's get back to, to the Guyana. OK, so yeah, this is a very interesting thing. So you see, we're looking at the northern part of South America. This is north of Brazil. And we have these territories known as the Guyanas. There are three Guyanas. There is the main Guyana. OK, so we see the yellow is Venezuela. And then we have uh, the, the one in the black here in the image we have is Guyana, which is the English-British Guyana. Mm -hmm. And then Suriname, which used to be, it used to be called the Dutch Guyana, the, the okay. Ho Holland, Netherlands have that, mm -hmm. which Suriname has an amazing story because Suriname used to belong to the English as well. And the Dutch used to be, used to own an island in, in New York. Uh, and they exchanged that island for this property because they knew of the gold. That island is now Manhattan. And if the, <laughs> if the Dutch would have kept it in mm -hmm. Manhattan, they'd probably be speaking Dutch right now. Uh, but you know, they had ambition for the gold and they came down for the gold. So anyway, Suriname got their independence from Dutch, so now they're their own country. And the same with uh, Guyana, which was a colony of French, and they mm -hmm. have maintained that they're a country of their own, but they're a French territory, which that's, that's the reason why. And then at the bottom you have Brazil. So how did these countries were formed? How did this population, and the reason I'm showing you this image is because it's so interesting. During the times of slavery, when uh, slaves were being brought from West Africa to the Caribbean and to North America uh, to work in the cane fields and the cotton fields, uh, many ships were coming on the north. It mm -hmm. Actually, um, it is said that Christopher Columbus saw French Guyana from a boat in 1846, I believe. So he never touched ground there. Mm -hmm. He went up north to the, to the Caribbeans. But he eyeballed it. Uh, the, the, the reason I'm talking about this is because when the slave boats were coming up from uh, Africa up to, to the Americas, some of the slaves will rebel mm -hmm. against, and they will take over the, the boats. And then they will, instead of going all the way up, finishing the trip, they will go to the pl first place they would find land. And they will get to these places, French Guyana, Suriname, uh, and Guyana. So a lot of these slaves, African from African descent, you know, they're very dark skinned, to save their lives, they will uh, either jump boat as soon as they saw the water, or they will take over the boat come over to this place and then they will go deep into the jungles and that's how these tribes got to the north of the Amazon and that's where the American Indians and the Maroons the Maroons are are known the Maroons is a tribe that for over a hundred years they didn't have any contact with communication they didn't have any contact with anybody and it's been only in the last 30 years that the Maroons have come out from the Amazon to the northern parts, to Cheyenne, the capital, and to the villages where they are, you know, doing different interactions and doing businesses. And I had the privilege to be with the Maroons. And you know, they're wonderful people. Actually, I have a picture, I don't know if we can find it, of the Maroon women that are um, in the river. And I want to show you this picture. Let's go to our PowerPoint. Okay, so right here, this is Maroon women. like from African descent that now live in, they're South Americans now. Yeah. And they are washing their dishes after dinner. I took this picture with my phone. Uh, right there, I was, I was with them. And they were washing their dishes at the river. Now, of course, they don't have any soap. Uh, so what they use is the sand from the, from the river. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they rub the sand against their dishes. And that's how they get all, rid of the old food. And then since the water is running, they just run their, their dishes. And they're very clean people. 
Um, but you know, when you don't have soap or anything like that, you use whatever you have. Yes, but I've never imagined that's how you would clean dishes if you don't have soap. <laughs> right. Like, I've never thought about this, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the Maroons are great swimmers. They are excellent swimmers. They're great fishers. But in these rivers, you have to be careful because they have these little alligators called caimans. And caimans are known to take kids. And they don't grow as large as alligators. Caimans are, maybe they can grow about a meter and a half, a meter, you know, long, but they're still dangerous. So um, they also have, um, I traveled this river by boat for a long time. Um, and they have um, a lot of eels, like the fish that look mm -hmm. like a snake, but they're electric eels. So I was told, if you're gonna get in the water, do not go where the water is passive go where the water is moving because the electric eels like the passive water and you'll get shocked. You'll get a nice greeting by them. All right, let's look at some other pictures that we have. Um, okay, so here's another interesting uh, fact about uh, Guyana and this part of, the, of, of the South America is that the lumber that comes from here, the wood, the trees that come from here is some of the most hard and beautiful wood that there is, and some of the most expensive. Some of the uh, lumber we're looking at in this picture, I, I also took this picture there, it's around $100, $150 the square foot of wood. It's that good. You know, for those carpenters and, and the people that know about carpentry, the harder the wood, the heavier the wood, the, the better the wood is, the better quality. So this is very heavy and very hardwood. It's not like pine. Pine is one of the most cheapest mm -hmm. uh, because it doesn't weight a whole lot and it doesn't cost a whole lot either. So anyway, um, yeah, let's let's talk about uh, a little bit about... Three requirements. What what do you need yes. to get there? Tell us about that. So as a U.S. citizen, you just need to have a passport that's up to date and you can stay up to 90 days. If yeah. you want to stay longer, you need a visa. Right, right. So, do you want to explain how you got there with the little plane? <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got that a little plane. I actually landed in the in the middle, right in the border. I'll show you in Google Earth if we go, go to Google Earth. So, right here is the capital, right? Uh, this is actually the north, and I landed right here at Gran Santi, and there are islands as you can see, right in the middle. And somewhere around here, there is a little strip of dirt where I landed. And I'm gonna be honest, and I hope there is no uh, <laughs> government people watching from French Guyana. I was actually smuggled into French Guyana. <laughs> I didn't go really? through that, yes. <laughs> so I, I woke up in French Guyana. Uh, oh, here is the, the airport, the Grand Santini Airport. And it's right here in, 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 in the French Guyana. And you can see there is not a, it's not, um, concrete what you're seeing is dirt so this was actually my first time landing on dirt strip mm -hmm. and you can feel it oh my goodness I and it was it was fantastic because when I landed uh, there were kids that come with a wheelbarrow to get your luggage really? <laughs> and there's only like three people that work at the airport uh, so there's only that like the lad little house which I was there right here on this one and um, Anyway, so they, they, my friends uh, moved me over to French Guyana and then I did the work that I was doing there from, from there. Uh, but we're looking at the rivers. So this, I think this is the, the Rio La, Lagua, the River Lagua, and in one side is French Guyana and in the other side is Suriname. And Lina, you will not believe what I saw uh, from this river. Uh, I would see cars being transported across the river on little canoes, like they were put two wheels mm -hmm. uh, on the left side of the canoe for two wheels and then another canoe, two other wheels, and they would put a car <laughs> with two canoes and cross them over to the countries. And uh, no, just, just incredible. It's not very big and, and like I said, there is really no tourists there and the only light-skinned people there are Brazilians and they're looking for gold, so Brazilians are not very welcome uh, there. So I had to reassure them, no, no Brazilian, no Portuguese. I was like, English, Espanol or English only. 
So anyway, let's let's go back. Oh, you have a picture there in the PowerPoint of what it is. Look, I took that picture from the airplane. So um, yeah, that's what uh, that's what the river Lagua uh, looks like. Oh, and, and right here on the left side of this picture, you see this village, and these are gold villages. So gold is so interesting how they find it. I learned a lot about how they do it. Uh, they're going out in the jungle close to the river and they're, you know, digging. Um, mm -hmm. they, they do use uh, things to blow up things. And whenever they found gold, everybody stops and everybody goes there because gold runs in veins. So if they found a little bit of gold somewhere, that means that there is gold, more gold around there. So they'll start blowing up, they'll go north, south, west, or east, until they start discovering the vein, and before you know it, they'll find, you know. Uh, you know one thing about the gold that I discovered there, because I saw the gold that they were pulling out, is that gold is not the hardest metal, like mineral. It's not, what is the hardest then, if it's not gold? The diamonds. The diamonds? Diamonds are the hardest. They're like very hard but gold is actually the real gold mm -hmm. is supposed to be soft even even to the pressure is supposed to be moving and if it doesn't then it's not real gold uh, <laughs> so uh yeah interesting things you found there yes i didn't know that <laughs> <laughs> so i'm learning here too yeah <laughs> so because there is so much gold out there gold is cheap and you can actually buy you know little uh chains of gold i didn't buy any because i don't wear any but <laughs> But they are good, good price compared to the U.S. Of course, they come to the U.S. and they are ten times the price that they sell them over there. So yes, you do need a passport there, even though I didn't use one. Uh, if you're there for 90 days, I wasn't there for 90 days, so I didn't have to get a visa either. Uh, let's go to food and culture. So as you said, the cayenne peppers are named after the French Guyana. Mm -hmm. Talk about cayenne. The other thing is they have turtles, and turtles are often found nesting on the beaches of French Guiana. So yeah. be careful. Right, don't don't don't, don't, don't step on them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but these are uh, sea turtles, right? Uh, or land turtles? They leather, they have to be sea turtles, yeah. Leatherback turtles. Okay. So leatherback. Yes. Is that what they're called? That's awesome. Leatherback turtle. I wonder if their back feels like leather. I don't know. Oh, I hope. Well, that's you. something to find out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so we have to go there to find that out. We'll, we'll have to mm -hmm. search it out, yeah. And as you said, we talked about gold. And it's one of the main exports uh -huh. for them. They like soccer. Uh huh. So many. Oh, yes. Countries. Soccer is the number one sport yes. in the world. That's right. It is. The most beautiful sport in the world. And they even have a men's national team. Like they're so small, but they have their own national team. Oh yes, you have to, you have to have that. Yes, yes absolutely. And can you believe it's like a European territory, a French territory, and they do not have public transportation? That's incredible. They do not have it. So, so I think you know, it's completely normal because you don't have any other way of transportation unless you have your own. So it's good to say, hey, give me a, you know, give me a ride, yes. and people will give you a ride because they know there is no other way. How did you get around in a country? Um, just by air and boats. Okay. Air, air and boats and walking, but most of the time it was by the boats. I think we have a picture of me in one of the boats, one or two um, pictures there. I am uh, on the there boats. It is. Uh, you know, spend a lot of time. It's awesome, it's great, because you're looking to see if you can find some wild animals. But my behind hurts after two or three hours of being on those boats. I bet it does. <laughs> Uh, and those are hand by the maroons. That boat was mm -hmm. handmade by, by the maroons, you know. Yeah. So it's right at the border of, of Suriname and Guala. Anyway, I think there was uh, another one. Oh, the, the kids go to school on boats. You know how we have the yellow buses here in yes. America? So there is a boat that goes through the school and stops right at the banks of the rivers mm -hmm. and picks up the kids take them to the school and then drop them off. So kids go to school on boats, that's fun, huh? Yes. Yeah. I got to see that. All right, what else we have? Religion. So the religion is, uh, 
oh, that's a plane I, I got into. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's, that's only like a six people airplane. It's very small and you feel it. But because they're small, you don't go over 10, 15,000 feet above sea level. So you, you fly, you know, lower. It still hurts if you fall. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you feel everything. You feel the wind. Yes. And, I and don't think I like that. Land. You wouldn't like a small plane? No, oh, I don't. they're super fun. I think you would. You do? Yeah. Nope. They're super fun. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I don't want to feel every wind. Every and wind, yeah. No. <laughs> oh, well, you have to be careful is not to hear the birds, because the birds can get into the engines. Yeah. So, actually, before you, you take off, somebody has to go in on the strip and mm -hmm. make sure all the birds are away, and then uh, so that the planes can take off. Yeah. So, as you mentioned, religion. Uh -huh. The majority of the country are Roman Catholic. Uh -huh. Education, the schooling is required until at least 16 years old. Okay, well, that's, that's high. Yeah. Yeah, compared to other countries, yeah, that is high. Yeah, and the literacy rate is more than 80% throughout the country. And that's high. That's high. Like, wow. Yeah. That's really high. I wonder if they consider, well, I'm sure they do consider the southern parts you know not a lot of people live in the amazon jungle because yeah. it's so dense yeah and there's so many wild animals and so so much danger so most of the people live in the north part of the country yeah and holidays they celebrate all french holidays okay so including labor day bastille day all the catholic holidays and what else mardi gras to know, you know the Mardi Gras that is celebrated in uh, New in New Orleans. New Orleans, New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, that's a big party in New Orleans. It also happens in French Guyana, yeah. especially because of the French. It's a big holiday in, 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 in there. The celebrate the celebration mm -hmm. often lasts a month of carnivals <laughs> and food, music, and uh, multiple festivities happening there. Cool. And family, most families have at least three children. Yeah. Like for you, like since it's a European territory, I think that's a lot and uncommon. <laughs> at least in Germany, it's uncommon to have three right. or more kids. Right, most people only have one, right? One or two. One or two, yeah, and two is like pushing it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, most families live very close by each other and they main, maintain closeness by participating in activities together and going to church together. So let's talk a little bit about the economy of the nation. So the biggest economical asset is the seafood, mm -hmm. mainly shrimp production. Okay, well, yeah. big and shrimp. Yeah. yeah. And probably gold as a big export. Gold is a big export and yeah. lumber, lumber, the wood. Yeah. Uh, they, of course it comes to uh, North America, Central America and some of it to Europe as well. Um, some interesting uh, facts, we already talked about that. Yes. Um, let's talk about the, uh, let's look at some other places. Well, here's the capital again. Uh, it's yeah. the pictures, let's, some, let's show some of the pictures of what it looks. Look at that, that looks pretty cool. Yes. Uh, uh, the, the Palace of the Palms, if yeah. I'm reading that right in French, is that French? It let's should be, right? Now you speak a little bit of French, you speak more French than I do. So. Je ne peux pas. <laughs> I know that's basically what I can say. Yeah. I'm not gonna get around that's there with that my sounds French. Right. That sounds right. <laughs> Your French sounds right. Okay. So that's a square in the middle of the town uh -huh. that locals and tourists meet up to to relax and socialize. Yeah, very nice. And it's surrounded by Creole buildings with shops and bars. Yeah. Well, and yeah, and as you can see, the palm tree line this area as well. Very beautiful. Now let's look to the next, and this is interesting. We're gonna we're looking at here at the Devil's Island, the Devil's Island. I think there yeah. was a movie about this. I don't know, but um, Lena, why is it called the Devil's Island? Because in the past it was used like it had a prison on it, uh -huh. and France, like France, used it to deport prisoners. Really? Yes, from the European so continent to over. To the South American continent. So if you're a very bad French, <laughs> you were put in a boat 
Yeah. And same here. Yeah. This is like the Guantanamo or Alcatraz. Yeah. And wow. the prison on Devil's Island was considered to be the most feared penal colony in the world. Really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> well, I guess you didn't make it alive there, huh? Well, it raised also a lot of human rights controversies uh -huh. because of the harsh treatment. So wow. if you got deported there, huh, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> wow. Well, they stopped. Well, they stopped serving as a prison in 1953. Okay. That was So, um, you know, like like I was sharing earlier, a lot of these countries are considered trash countries. Yeah. What does that mean? That means that in the old days, whenever uh, the society wanted to clean up the from the bad influence in the society, like all the criminals, all the the drug addicts, prostitutes, and all that, they would take them on boats and send them to different countries. For French, it was French Guyana that they would send them. For Norway, it was Iceland. For Britain, it was the Americas. <laughs> it was the United States. Uh, you know, uh, also for New Zealand, it was Australia and, and different, different places like that. Yeah. So let's look at the museum of, uh, this is the museum of culture in Guyana, so this is a place you can visit when you go there. Uh, look at the structure, look at the way the, the houses are built. They have some of the Dutch kind of flavor too. Yeah. The old European style. Um, so, okay. Uh, that's in Peru, it's all, it only has 26,000 uh -huh. people. So let, let's go to Google Earth <laughs> and show you where Kuru is. So here we have Chayan, Cayan, and then we have Tenote, and then Coru, which Coru is the other bigger uh, city around here. And we'll just take um, a random pick and we'll go right here for a street view of this um, little town. And of course, we're looking at the ocean. This is the Atlantic Ocean that you're looking at. And like you see, there is not a lot of uh, beach. There is rock, sand, and, and grass, but this place doesn't look too bad. And over here on the horizon in this picture, let me see right here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it right here on the horizon, but this is the Devil's Island back there. Yeah. That's, that's what you see out there. Here's some people. And yeah, this is what you look at. Can you find the Guiana Space Center? The, yeah, I'll, I'll look for that. The, is it in Konoko? Is it here? Yes. Okay. It's supposed to be. It's somewhere <laughs> near there. <laughs> right, right. Let me see. Uh, oh, there's a soccer field, of course. Uh, State the walk to that. And the space center. Let me see. What's Is there a specific name for the space center? Le Centre Spatial Guyane. If my pronunciation is correct. Uh -huh. Let me see. The center special. Is it showing up? Uh, um, Should we use the English name? <laughs> yeah, let's use the English name. Guyana Space Center. Oh, there it is. Koroko, there we go. Should there. And oh, it's right there. Is it right there? Yes. <laughs> Wait. And there it is. Okay. There it is. Oh, very we close just to the airport. We it. were just right there. Yeah. So we're looking right here at the Space Center, Space Museum. So this is such an interesting uh, thing, Lynn, and you research this. Yeah. I did not see this when I was there, but um, let's look at some of the pictures. Let's look at some of the pictures of this uh, space center. Who would have thought yeah. that there's a space center in, in South America? So there's a shot of that. I didn't think so, but that's the launch pad used by many European countries mm -hmm. to launch rockets and satellites, satellites into the space. And the main reason for placing it in French Guiana, besides being part of France, uh -huh. is that it's, it's the closest portion of Europe to the equator. Wow. And I thought it was very in 
interesting. That is so interesting. That the closer a rocket launches from the equator, the more effective the launch, since the Earth's rotation helps with the rocket velocity, making it up to 25% more effective. So more effective than launching safer. from the European continent to wow. launch it from there. Wow. So the equator, even for space people, the equator is important because you can take off better. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, because of the way the rotation of the Earth, right? Yes. So here is uh, here's one called Galileo. And yeah, it's one of Galileo. It's one of the information satellite. Wow. Things from Europe. Yeah. Do they launch people out of here? No, they d actually do not. Wow. They don't. But so not people, just but they send and supplies and communication systems. Yes. And that's, that's what they launch from there. That's incredible. And they also launch supplies to the international international space station. There's there's the okay. So if you're there and they're launching something, you should definitely check it out. Yeah, that would be something cool to see. I don't know how many people have seen in person. We see them on TV, right? Yes. But uh, I saw so them only on TV. Yeah, Kuru, Ko, what's it called? Kuru? Kuru. Me too. I've only seen them on TV. Yeah. Kuru. And uh, that's that's the space center that you can find right here in French Guiana. So so you can get an idea where it is. We're looking at the north, and that's where it is. There's Cayenne, and it is Kourou, the space center. Okay, fantastic. That's an awesome thing you can see there. Yeah. All right. What else do we have? Uh, the beach. La Playa. The Roches, the Plague of the Roches. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, like I said, let's show them that picture in PowerPoint and they can see what, what it's like. If you notice, the water is not as blue because it's not the Caribbean, it's Atlantic, and there's a lot of mud uh, there. But at least there are some, you know, relaxed places if you're not into getting into the water. Yeah. Now, when you get into the water, the water's too clean, it's just the bottom of it is muddy and it looks like everything is mud, but it's not all mud. It's not. No. Did you go into the water when uh, you were there? No, no, not not in the north. I was in the water in the rivers. Oh, okay. In the rivers, yeah. So very cool. Let's look at engraved rocks of Carapa. Let me see if yeah. I can find Carapa. So this is a pre-Columbian art, rock art, and if you want to, and you're there, they have guided tours available. That's to amazing. Look there. So maybe. Yeah, we're Google looking Earth. at the at the Impasse Carapa. Oh, this is a a religious center of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't find it. <laughs> oh, um, another thing during um, the exodus of the Jewish people uh, from Europe, they the there's a number of Jewish people that came here to to Guyana as well. So again, this is uh, Karuku. Oh no, this is the capital of Cheyenne. And from yeah. here you see where the rivers go. So when people want to go to the interior, they get on those boats and they go down, down into the Amazon. Yeah. The yeah. interiors, they're called interiors. And when we go back to the PowerPoint, there's another picture of you. Yeah, in one of those rivers. <laughs> uh, you know, so like what's I the stuff in the, behind you? Why is so this on your boat? It, 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 it was not a bad, we were bringing supplies, but that was something that um, somebody was needing for, uh, to build furniture. Actually, they were gonna use every bit of that uh -huh. foam, which was very precious, you know. Uh, I drive here in the States and I see stuff like that thrown away all the time, but over there is so precious and they, you know, they, they, they don't waste anything. They, they take advantage of everything they have. So yeah, I was on that on those rivers for many hours. It was, it was great through rain, through sun, through everything else. I would go back in a heartbeat. I would go back to to, to French Guiana. All right, let's see what else we have. And in, in, um, I think we're getting close to the end. Yes, let's just look real quick on those vis uh, places to visit. Uh huh. Like the Guiana Amazonian Park is one of the largest protected biodiversity zones on the planet. Wow. And it's France's largest national park. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, really? Is it largest for France? Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah. 
Let me see if I can find it in uh, uh, Google Earth. Let's go back to Google Earth and show you what this park is. So we're going right here. You right can only get there by canoe or travel. Or, by or, air. Or, or air. Let's zoom in. I don't know if we have any, and I don't know if we'll be able to see any um, any pictures from here. Well, I don't uh, know if we can get to see the, the exact, but let me see. Let's look some of the pictures from here. So that's what that's what it looks like. Of course, you know, very beautiful. Lots of green. There is the the rivers. That's kind of like the places where people live. Very beautiful. The trees. Oh, like I said, did you see that truck? They probably moved it on those <laughs> <Yeah>. canoes. <laughs> probably. Uh, and just green and green and green. Falcon. To the vents and drop. Air Guyani. So Air, Air Guyani, <laughs> they have their own airplanes. And they're not very big, you know. No. So, oh, nice, nice sunset there. Oh, these are some of the homes of the Maroons. So this is how their homes are built. Uh, you know, they, they uh, use that, you can do forward four wheeler, I did not do that. Here is a, a village there in the Amazonian park. Very cool. Awesome. So that's, that's where you would wanna go if you wanna to visit them. Well, anything else you have? Is that it for today? I think that's it for today. Awesome. Well, I am so glad you were able to join us and learn a little bit more about our world and about culture, history, economics, finances. And uh, we're so happy that you, you joined us today. Thank you, Lena, for your time. You're and uh, we'll see you again next week for a very special episode of Away We Go. Don't forget it. Next Wednesday at 11 a.m. We'll see you on Away We Go. Thank you so much. Have a great day.